Joining us today for this next in the series of palm weaving videos is Tony Grisanti. Welcome, Tony. Thank you, Father. Good to have you here because you're going to show us something that you learned from your own fathers. Yes, I did. Many, many years ago. So how do we start this particular cross weave, isn't it? This will be the cross. And the first thing to do is to take two palms. Um, I have two here, I believe. Yeah. And to strip off the leading edge because they're generally too hard to start twisting the palm. So what I do is just take my fingertips and get in toward the center of the palm here with my nails and just pull toward me. And that stripping ensures the flexibility of the palm. Yes. And also make sure it doesn't crack while you're... Correct. Uh, and you have to do that on both sides and try to keep them together so that you get the same widths on both pieces. And then from there, take a look at them because you need something like 18 inches at least to make, we either make a single cross, we can make a double, or we, we could make a triple. And I'll, I'll explain what I'm doing as I go with that. And I'm thinking that right here, I've got about two foot, 20 inches of palm. So I'll cut that off here. And then trim this end. Well, this end is already trimmed, so I won't bother with that. Um, another thing to look forward to is when you see the width of the palm as you go down, if it's wider here and this end, that end is narrower as it is, but this end is more narrow, I would take a little bit more off here because once you try to get this width through this starting point, it won't go through the palm, which I'll show you now. It'll help you insert, insert and pull many, through. Many, many times over and over again. Yes, yes. So the thing to do is to take one on the right, one on the left, lay it on top of the, the one on your left, put your thumbnail there and pull it over toward you and just sort of crease it a little bit. You want to make this loop here that I'm going to be making fairly uh, open so as you can slip the palms back and forth In other words, and have enough looser, room. A, looser, a little more looser, yes. So I fold it over once. Now I'll fold it over one more time. And not to squeeze them too hard, but just to make sure they're bent over. Now this is sliding back and forth. The next thing, and the most important part now, is to push this one from your right behind the loop, like this, so that it comes out this end. When it does, no twisting, keep it straight, and just bring it over like this. And it's gonna go, I don't know if you can see this, but right inside there. There's enough room in there to slip that piece of palm in. And while you're holding that end, just pull it through. Now I'm gonna put my hand this way so you can see what I'm doing. And it, this is where that width I was talking about earlier comes into play. It gets a little stiff pulling it through now because it was a little bit wider, but there's enough room in there that it'll come through. Now that locks everything in place. Now you can just fold it back a little bit. What I like to do is trim off these hairs. And once it's locked in place, you're gonna work from there for the whole rest of the cross, right? Exactly. So, in making the cross, it's just a series of taking the end of the palm, bring it around plainly, now not twisting again, like I said before, but just like this, and inserting it inside there, and just pull it through. Uh, and uh, let's see if I may say this. As you're doing that, and you're thinking about whether you want to make a single, a double, or a triple cross, you have to leave the ear of the cross long enough so that you can get more folds in between here, which I will be showing you. And the double, single, triple, basically the number of loops that on you each make. arm of the cross. Yes. Um, And I'm thinking now, this might be a little too long, so I'll pull it back a little more. 
For what I want to do, I'll make the, the triple, and this goes back into the other side, and doing essentially doing the same thing. You're, you're just going back and forth. The only thing with this now is, you got to you have to try and get these loops that look about the same. And what I try to do when I do that is to turn it this way, and look at it this way, rather than from the front. But once you go this way, you can actually see if the loops are the same. And that looks the same. Now, if you were finished with the cross, the uh, horizontal part of the cross, if you, were, if you were satisfied with that, you would leave, just cut this stem off here, cut it off here, discard whatever you're gonna do for, then, for the time being, and then leave it like that. But when I had said something about making a double, I'm gonna go back inside the, the loop again and pull it through, I can do this. Only this one I'm gonna make a little bit shorter. Like that. And if I was to complete the other side, that would make a double, what I call a double cross. And actually what I'm doing is as I'm making the cross, I'm just sort of manipulating the palm with the curve of the palm there that you can see. Otherwise it's gonna stay big and round or you don't wanna squeeze them too much because then they become flat. You don't want that. Now if you were through with the cross, you would cut this off because you're gonna make a little loop in the front of this after a while like that. If that's what you wanted, then you would cut this off here. But now we're gonna talk about the triple is to go back in again. And that's the reason for making this first loop a little loose so that you can get all of these pieces of palm in there. Otherwise you can't get them in. It becomes too, too tight. Now naturally this one will be a little bit smaller. And then back again. It's getting tight to go in there now. It's really getting to look quite intricate there, the wave. But it's just a series of repetitions. So it's pulling it back and through and back and through. Right, without twisting. It's just, matter of fact, it's folding rather than twisting. We'll get into the twisting a little later with the heart. And again, I always like to look at it this way. Now I'm just gonna, like I said, fold this over to where I think I need an amount of palm to make a little circle in the front of the, the cross and I'll cut this off. And generally hang on to these little pieces of which I'll show you what we're going to use them for a little later. Now to continue with the vertical post of the cross, what we're gonna do is turn this backwards. And because we are gonna be doing this backwards we're, and we're making a triple cross, we're going to have to make the small, we made the small loop last on the front of the cross. We're gonna be making the, the small uh, loop first on the back of the cross because we're doing this backwards now from the back. So what we're going to do, and again, we're not twisting, we're just bending to put this in and make this first loop instead of the largest one, whoop, there's a little piece here. We're gonna make it the smallest like this. And the same, the same with the bottom one. Now the bottom of the cross, the vertical piece is always longer, so it'll be a little bit longer than the one we made on top, which you can see. We go back in again and make the second loop a little bit longer. And 
and the bottom a little bit longer also. And here you'll notice why you needed a longer palm, like you said, 18 to 20 inches. Right. Because you're using more of the palm to make these loops for the lower bar of the cross. Yes. And you, sometimes you just have to keep manipulating so that you don't run out of palm. Now this will be the last one. Three loops on three loops. each uh, arm of the cross. Yes. And three on the vertical post, too. Now, this one on the, on, the, on the bottom should be the longest, really, of all of them. And being with palms, naturally, the way the palms are shaped, pointed, they're not flat pieces that are rectangular in size all the way. You're going to wind up with some of the palm being a little bit wider than the other as the cross goes on or whatever you're making as far as that goes. And then the last piece, I think, hmm. Kind of close there. Yeah, it's, it's close. This one's close. Matter of fact, I have to redo what I'm doing here. What you're doing there is adjusting the height of the loops so you can have a longer one on the bottom and more or less have them somewhat equidistant, each, each loop equidistant from the uh, center there. Yeah, I just wish they were as wide all the way, but they're not, but that's okay. Well, that's part it's, of the natural yeah. look of the palm, though. And they could be adjusted. Mm -hmm. right, I, I, I'm more or less satisfied with that, but then I would like to bend them forward a little bit. Okay. Now, I would take this that's left over to just to curl it and see what I need to get it into the front of the cross. Take it off, and then what I do is just clip the corners off to make it a little more easier to insert in here. Because this is the, the, probably the hardest part to get in there and you don't want to crease the palm. Yeah, you want to keep it looped like as, that. As so round as you fold can, it. yes. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, uh, I remember when I said that part was getting a little hard to, uh, to get in there, but you have to just keep working it with your hands. There we go. Cutting those edges out made it a lot easier to yes, slide in. otherwise you'd have a rough time, Father, to get it in there. Okay, we're set with that so far. If I can just show you a picture of that. All right, now, just to embellish it a little bit more, if we may, we'll take another palm, strip the edge off again. And almost the same width so, uh, as, the, as the cross. What I like to do is just to make an insertion here into that center, bring it up to the top part of the cross, and just sort of eyeball it up to where I can cut this on an angle. Try it the first time to make sure it goes in there. And if it does, and I'm satisfied with that, I'll go back and make another one. Of the same size. And again, it's, it's always easier to clip these corners off. It makes it easier to insert the pieces in. And then I'll just put this in here and pull it up to the top beam of the cross. 
and do the same on the other side. And do the same for the uh, horizontal bar. They almost look like rays of glory or something extending from the cross, but they also widen the bar of the cross and give it a really neat effect. So you want to get both of those the same length? Yeah, the same length. Because the uh, when I made the loops, I, I tried to make them even. Sometimes it's a little hard to get them the same, but... And you're inserting them with the slanted part towards the bar, towards yes. the center of each the center of the loop. arm of the yep. cross, the loop itself kind of widens again the, each of the bars in a really neat way. Three makes it three-dimensional. And one more time, the same on the other side of the horizontal bar. Let me get this over here first. Yeah, that little touch of clipping off the edges makes a, little, a yeah, world makes of a, a difference, difference getting in it because by now, Father, it's getting tight in there, very tight to get them in there. I'm always surprised on how that knot in the middle, if you want to call it a knot, holds every, holds everything up. together so well. And then, like, like we said earlier, it has to be, can't be too tight because then you can't get, get everything in there. That's it. And this is the finished cross, and this is the triple cross, like we spoke about earlier. Very beautiful. Exquisite. You can see how preci precise your work is right there. Well, thank you, Father. It's just, it's been a long time. A significant part of your father's weave was the cross itself, but also which symbolizes Jesus, his resurrection, his suffering, especially the beauty in it, but also his heart, his sacred heart. And that's something uh, that basically, doesn't it start the same way that the cross Yes, is? you'll find out and see that the, the opening piece is the same as making the cross. Uh, only thing is, difference is instead of just bending the weave, we're gonna be twisting the weave, which will turn it into a, a heart. I'm looking forward to seeing this. And part. then that will hang from the bottom of the cross. Mm -hmm. Again, I took two more strips that I previously had taken the edges off with, like we did with the cross. But the opening is the same as that. It's one on top of the other. The one from the right on top of the one on my left. And again, the same thing. You bend it forward once, bend it forward again. Take the piece on the right, go backwards behind, come around, and just bending, no twisting on this, go into the front of that loop, and pull it through and tighten everything up. Again, that last insertion, uh, locks locks everything in place and again we're not we're fairly loose here but not too loose that it'll fall apart and what I like to do is just with your thumb and four fingers just crimp that a little bit I'm squeezing it is what I'm doing just to tighten it up a bit 
Now, like we did with the cross, we took the palm and bent it. Only this time, we're going to twist it like this. That's the only part, if you can see as I twist, what happens to the palm. Forms a racetrack loop, if you will. Rather than just bend it like this, we're going to twist, twist it like this and put it inside. Now this is what happens. It starts to form a loop like this rather than a bent loop. loop. And we'll pull it through to make a certain size compared to the cross. And as we do, again, I would start to fashion this by putting a little crease in there and not keeping it flat open but because once you start putting all these loops together, if you don't bend that a little bit, they're gonna pop open. So now, if you can see this, I started with this loop coming up top and going down like that. This one will be the opposite. It'll be up top, but now it'll be going this way. You can't do this way, all right? Because then you can see how they're gonna wind up. You have to go from the top down. In the opposite direction. Opposite direction, one. exactly. And then you can start seeing the loops that try to look the same amount of length to them and curves to them. But now, like the cross, they were, <clears throat> excuse me, they were just bent over and made plain. These, you can see a different shape now, which if you bend them like this, because eventually you're gonna lock these together, okay? So from there, then I would just cut this off. Bend this over a little bit. This one also, so that they're this way. Now, turn this over and take this one. Do the same thing. I twisted the other one inside out. On the, on the opposite side, I twisted it inside out. This one, I'm going from the top this way so that that fold is going away from me now. It's not coming in toward me, it's going away from me if you can see that. It's twisted this way and inserted. And I'm just looking to see if I'm making them the same lengths. This one is a little bit longer, yeah. Okay, I want to bend that over again like I did the other loops. All right, I have three of them about the same now. So I'll turn this back over again. Now you'll see this palm heading downward. I'm holding, trying to hold this straight up and down, these two vertically. And you'll see how this palm is facing down. I don't want to go down and up. I want to come back up again. So I'll start at the top and then this will start to come back down again. If I can get that in there. <laughs> it started to get a little tight, but it should go with a little help from my friend. Okay. There. And you probably have to help it along a little bit because it wants to do something else of its own free will. And you may notice on the screen there that all the loops are facing the same way. The points are either facing towards my, my, what may be the back and then the open parts are fa facing the front. Now once we get these that all look about the same, we can start to put it together. But just bend them over a little bit, each one as you go. And the last one that has this left of palm left to it will be the last one we'll put together because we want to pull this when all the other three pieces are put together to tighten everything up.
So we'll save that one for last. So we'll take this one and bend it over and put it on top of this one. Take this one and bend it over and put it on top of that. And then this one will be the last one because we're gonna pull this now just to tighten everything up. And by pulling those four arms together, you have it the heart. It forms the heart, yeah. And yeah, the yeah. last one there, when, is a little, when you pull it tighter, holds the others together. The other three together, yes. And then I always just leave a little bit of a loop that we can hang this from the cross. And insert it into the bottom of the cross. So you're taking that loop, which is the last strand from the heart, and placing it through the largest loop of the bottom arm of the cross there, the vertical bar. So this would be the completed heart and cross. most beautiful job the sacred heart of Jesus which was pierced on the cross hanging from the bottom and then the uh, tri barred cross there itself an excellent excellent depiction thank you, thank you for thanks for remembering how to do this all these years <laughs> I don't know it came back somehow I guess you still can teach an old man new tricks you can see you know what you're doing no try father that's all I can do Thank you very much You're for showing welcome. us this. Thank you for having me.